Hey everybody, thanks for joining me tonight. I'm going to be bringing you a review of this new installed hilt that I just finished up. This is the KR Sabres and One Replica's OWK. This is the hilt from, with uh, by Obi-Wan Kenobi and the Phantom Menace. As I've done before, uh, this is one of my favorite prequel hilts. I have one from Corbett from a few years ago that I did an install on. Uh, you can check that out on my, uh, my YouTube page. This is a, a nice upgrade in my opinion. This seems to be a little bit more... Uh, accurate to the screen, to the hilt itself, than what we've had in the past. Uh, I'm going to kind of go over this from head to toe. This is installed with a Profi 2.2. It currently has, uh, I believe, the 5.8 or 5.7 uh, operating system. Uh, I have a ton of blade styles on here by uh, Fernando De Rosa, so thank you again for all of those, Fernando, and your page. Uh, a lot of different fonts on here from uh, quite a few different makers. Uh, but I want to go over this from start to finish. Uh, this one, you get this from KR. It comes in its nice little package. Again, these uh, these really nice presentation boxes that have just been, um, which has been making the rounds over the last couple of years. Uh, very different than what we used to get um, from some of you who've been ordering hilts for the past few, you know, for years prior. Uh, typically, a lot of them were sent in just brown shipping boxes wrapped in either a newspaper or a bubbled wrap. Uh, so it's kind of cool to really see that. And I believe also, so there's the KR Sabres and One Replicas. But uh, yeah, I really, really dig the box. Uh, this came out, this hilt I believe was released in, I think like late, late 2019, early 2020. Uh, sold out real fast. I actually think the first round I didn't even get it. Uh, the second round of KR released a few more, and I think I got mine via, I think actually through Corbin's site, actually. He was selling a bunch. Uh, so I actually I grabbed one from there because I missed out on getting them from uh, from Call directly. But these also were made at the same time as uh, Qui-Gon's Hilt, if uh, a lot of people ended up grabbing that as well. Uh, I did not. Qui-Gon's Hilt is nice, but just uh, not as, it doesn't really speak to me as much as, as this one does. So kind of just like I've done before with a lot of my installed and reviews, we're just going to go kind of top to bottom. So starting off first with the, the blade plug. Oh, a lot of reflection there. Uh, so as you can see here, the whole top, uh, I believe this is a steel blade plug piece, which uh, is just really nice. It's just this mirror finish, uh, different than what we've seen in the past from, uh, from other hilts just like this. Um, these are silicone fillers in here, these little fake or faux uh, LEDs. Um, these also come in a, a dome shaped, Carl sent out a couple different versions, and then even like a hard plastic. Uh, if you look at his video that he did, his assembly video, he kind of goes over all of that and, and why he, he gave you all those options. Uh, I went with the flat silicone piece. Uh, they kind of slide in nicely, use a little E6000 to hold them in, and it's it's you're all set and ready to go. Uh, now this has like multiple shrouds, so this has the main shroud here, and this also has a very tiny shroud here. These pieces are all held together uh, by either screwing into one another or by uh, some retention screws. So one of the great things about this hilt is its switch solution. If uh, you know if you've ever bought either the Corbanth OWK from from years ago with Parks, um, or even some of the other like a like an Ultra Sabers or a Saber Forge. Um, the, the hilts are obviously a little, a little different. The Saber Forge and Ultra Sabers are obviously a little bit bigger. I had an Avenger before. Uh, that was one of my first FX hilts from Saber Forge that I ended up purchasing years ago. Um, just you could, it, you know, it's obviously fatter and not as accurate. Uh, there's a lot of rattling in in that one with this shroud here. Like if you if you moved it back and forth, you got a lot of rattling going on. Right now my cover text isn't screwed in all the way so that's why it's it, it'll make a little noise but the shroud itself doesn't make any noise which is nice but the switch solution was always an issue like in the Corbanth one there was really only the red button that had was made for the switch the auxiliary switch I actually had to kind of like drill into the heat sink in order to get the the pipe kind of to work as a switch uh, almost kind of working like a, a plunger using the crystal inside so I'm actually really happy with what they used because he used like a it was kind of like a C clip or a U clip between between the two buttons, and 
some really great feedback. Okay, now Carl explains exactly how to set this all up, um, but I'm just gonna kind of show this. So this here, well, I hope I didn't screw that up. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I used a little bit of Loctite in here to kind of secure that screw in. This is the blue Loctite. So you, once you get your desired feedback, you lock that in. And then this top piece just kind of goes over it. And it's almost like a, it's almost like a rocker. How it's, how it's set up. It's really interesting how this is done, uh, but it works out great. And it's the same thing on this side too. So this side here, this is a, this purple gem is also a purple, it's a purple silicone piece. Let's see if I can line that up right. And I might switch that out and try to see if I can get an actual like purple gem to, to slide in there. But uh, I mean, overall, it's a really great hilt. The width, I mean, I got decent sized hands, but I mean, this, you know, going all the way around, it's, it's supposed to be a slim hilt. The design for the inside now is really interesting because in the past, it's been very hard to get without any major modifications, hard to get a 28 millimeter base speaker. So did end up, they did, and Kyle was able to fit that in here. Um, I couldn't get a wow in here. I tried getting one of those in, but the, the thickness of the wow, of that speaker, it's almost like a double thickness of the, the, the rim and basically it was pushing up against this piece here every time I tried to push it all the way in uh, and it was causing a little bit of friction for me so I ended up just going with a, um, another 28 millimeter speaker base speaker that I had and it fits fine so what Kyle did take the cover tech off here So it's kind of like a two retention system. So you got the cover tech here, and then there's another smaller retention screw inside. And the reason why he, he did this is that if you listen to his video, he says they couldn't get a cover tech screw that was long enough to go through the shroud and then also connect into the, the main body here. So what they did was they used a set screw right here to if you see how like this is raised like there's a right now it's kind of flush but you raise the screw up a little bit and then it creates friction against the cover tech screw as it comes down and it causes it to lock in nice and tight uh, so this is a goth uh, 3d printed chassis uh, battery here this is a nice you know clean install all the wires are, are underneath the board here's my profi okay the speaker here is is uh, E6000 onto the the body as the wires run in. Always remember, your focus determines your reality. A little twist of that kill key. So this here, this slides on. You never have to take the pommel off. The pommel can stay on. The shroud can basically slide. Okay. Now there is, it can just basically rotate. So you can just basically undo it rotate it to show off the interior move your kill key switch and you're set okay now the way this lines up is called this uh, very intelligently you're going to use this as your guide okay and that little screw there so right now that little set screw i'm going to raise that up So it's kind of like locked in. So see, it's kind of like, it's got some friction in there a little bit. Get this bad boy on top. You could theoretically get another set screw. You could theoretically get a screw, a longer cover tech screw, and then just trim it. I was thinking about doing that myself. Okay. 
See? Doesn't move. Nice and silent. It's in there nice and tight now. Okay. So and here's the switches. At last we will have our revenge. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Lord Vader. So we have all these wonderful, wonderful sound fonts. Okay. In now, I will do what I must. there's not really a lot of shine through with this. Okay, believe me, I've looked. A uh, very, very small hint of it around this little lip in here. Okay? That's about it. But it's very, very small. Great smooth swing, as always. I'll tell you, there's really, really great sound venting through here. Okay? Um... A lot of space from that 28 millimeter speaker to push all this out. Um, all this basically, all the sound is just basically vented right out through there. Really nicely done. The bottom, there's no, there's no uh, holes there. It looks, you know, it's a static palm compared compared to what we've seen in the past, where there's usually sound venting holes in the bottom of this. But that looks really, really good. Okay, so I'm gonna get a blade in here just to show you guys what that looks like. Okay, so here's the blade plug. Okay, standard plug here. Now I did use Stock's his NeoPixel uh, PCB. Okay. Now again, really, I, I think that's such a, a a great idea for not having to worry about um, putting NeoPixel in the in the actual blade plug. So this works great. You can see there. Don't want to blind anybody. Okay, so we're going to put the blade in. This is a 36 inch Vader's Vault blade. This is, uh, this is one inch where the core band you could have actually done, you could have switched it around actually between a, a one inch uh, or, seven eighth, or seven eighth inch. Okay, here we go. We're going to right. do a little, little show, show on the blade. Again, this is the uh, random blaster bolt and lock up. Obi Wan Kenobi. This is General Kenobi. Lovely. More smiling faces. Yeah, a little Clone Wars version. So, again, guys, this is just such a really, really nice hilt. Guys, overall, I thought this was a really well-made hilt. This is the first KR Sabres hilt that I've actually purchased. And I'm really glad that I did, because I do like... Like I said before, if you guys that know me, uh, this is definitely one of my favorite prequel hilts. And I thought this was extremely well-made compared to what I've, I've had and I've owned in the past. So like I said, I've had two different versions of this. And this one, by far, is my favorite. So this is what it looks like when the when the blade is out. So it still looks very static-like. And then this just slides right in and completes the look. And I'm pretty sure that Qui-Gon's is almost exactly the same as that. Good, put it plugs in. Okay, guys, and you can see, like, it's just, it's such a sturdy, just very well made. And I'm gonna take out, this is my old Parks Corban from a couple of years ago. You know, just a couple of differences. You can just see just differences in the emitter. Okay, you can see the blade plug. You can see that right there. That's where the blade plug is compared to this whole face up top here. Okay, size wise, they are very similar. I will say that. The, the Corbanth one is just slightly thicker. 
size-wise, they're almost identical as far as um, height goes. The issue, you know, I had issues with the Core Banth One. Um, it's a tough install on this one. The uh, the clocking of mine was was really odd. Like it didn't clock the right way. I had to use like a couple of washers to kind of really some uh, clocking shims to get it the way that I wanted it. Like I said, to get an auxiliary switch in here took a little modification. Uh, I didn't mod anything in the body, but I saw a lot of people do that in order to get a larger speaker or to even get a larger board in here. Uh, I think that this is using like an old prism, if I'm not mistaken. But I might gut this whole thing and, and redo it with NeoPixel anyway, because this still has an inhaled LED. Um, I'll give this to one of my kids to use, because I, I think they, they do like this, this hilt, so I think that'd be a lot of fun. But uh, guys, overall, I thought this was a really uh, nice innovative way of creating this hilt a nice little slide if you will slide and reveal for this and uh, to get this installed um, really enjoy the rocker that they did up here for the switches i thought that was really well thought out uh, it's a very nicely uh, weighted hilt once everything's installed everything pretty much comes almost as is with a when you first open up the box with the exception of some of the little accessories having to put those on if you wanted to just do a static hilt which you could but uh, Colin, nice job with this. This really was an easy install, guys. It wasn't anything special. I didn't do any crystal chamber in here or anything like that, which typically takes more time, a little bit more intricate. Uh, just a basic chassis. You know, very happy with how this came out. Uh, and a couple of things that I've got uh, coming on the list. Uh, I'm trying to reinstall. I'm gutting a couple of hilts that I have right now. Some. Uh, uh, my first ASP that I did, I'm going to gut that. I'm going to put NeoPixel in there and a Profi and do that for my, uh, my one of my sons. And I've got uh, an RPK, his, one of his signature hilts. It's basically a Luke hilt, and it has like all different variations from the Hero, uh, Hero V2, V3, and uh, even a little bit of the V4 in there. So I want to try to install that one next. And uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for the chassis to come out for the, uh, the Mom Hero and uh, from Veracity Labs, and I'm going to be getting that guy installed. That'll, that'll be my next big install that I do, because that'll be Crystal Chamber that they come out with the whole nine yards. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but guys, with that, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below, any comments uh, or questions. And that's about it. I hope you guys in, uh, enjoyed this. Uh, tune in next time for the next review, and we will talk soon. All right, take care. Enjoy.